Hi everyone and welcome back to my kitchen today. I have a very special bread recipe for you guys. It's going to be perfect for the holiday season. I'll be making my easy pumpkin chocolate babka bread. Now, if you've never had babka before, it's typically made with a really soft brioche dough that's filled with a chocolate spread, twisted into a beautiful shape, and then finished with a simple sugar syrup to give it that glossy finish. Today I'm going to be making an easy version of this recipe using a soft pumpkin yeast dough. Now, typically babka is made with brioche dough, which takes about two full days to make, and it's a, kind of a lengthy process, but with my recipe, you can have this bread ready the same day, and this dough is so soft, so fluffy, and I love having a little bit of that pumpkin flavor in there as well. Just makes it extra special. Let's get things started. I'm going to start with the soft yeast dough first. Of course, you can get all the ingredients and the instructions up on my website. I have a link down in the video description box below. And for the yeast dough, I'm first going to warm up one cup of whole milk in the microwave. You could also do this on the stove top. And it needs to be between 120 and 130 degrees Fahrenheit. If it's too hot, the hot milk will actually kill the yeast and then the dough is just going to stay flat. I'm going to pour my warm milk into a large mixing bowl. And I'm going to sprinkle in one tablespoon of active yeast over the top. And we're just going to let this sit for a couple of minutes to allow that yeast to start proofing. And after about five minutes, I'm ready to add my next ingredients. So I've melted half a cup of unsalted butter in the microwave. I've let this cool down a little bit because I don't want it to be too hot. And we'll pour that into this milk and yeast mixture. We'll need two large eggs and I've brought these up to room temperature. One teaspoon of vanilla extract. One teaspoon of salt half a cup of white granulated sugar, and half a cup of pure, unsweetened, unseasoned pumpkin puree. And I'm going to mix this all together with my whisk until I have a smooth mixture and those eggs are well beaten. And now I'm ready to start adding in my flour. So I measured out five cups of all-purpose flour. I'm going to add in about one cup at a time drop that into the batter and then with the first cup I'm also going to add in one teaspoon of ground cinnamon it's going to add a little bit of that warm cinnamon flavor into the bread and then whisk the batter after each addition and then once the bread starts to come together into a dough ball I'll switch over to a spatula so it's easier to mix And once the dough starts to come together and kind of pull into a ball, I'm going to grab the rest of my flour, just kind of set that off to the side, sprinkle a little bit onto my work surface. We're gonna turn this dough out. Flour your hands really well. And then we're going to knead the dough, incorporating the rest of the flour, or until you have a really soft dough. So if it comes together before you add all five cups, or if you need to add a little bit more, just adjust the recipe um, as you make it because you want the dough to be really nice and soft. And I typically knead the dough for about four to six minutes until it's really smooth and elastic, but it should still stay really nice and soft. I like to add just a really light dusting of flour if the dough starts to get sticky. And this pumpkin yeast dough is ready for its first proofing. I'm going to place it back into my mixing bowl. Now I've filled a large pot with some steaming hot water. So this is not boiling water, just really hot water out of my faucet. I filled it about a third of the way so that when I place my mixing bowl over the top, the bottom of the bowl doesn't actually touch the water. But this warm water is going to keep this dough really nice and warm and it'll proof a little bit quicker. I'm going to cover it with a clean tea towel, place it onto my stove top where it's nice and warm and let this proof for about one to one and a half hours until it's doubled up in size. And while this is proofing, I'm going to show you how to make that incredible chocolate spread that we're going to use as a filling. For the chocolate spread, I'm going to be using a medium sized saucepan and I'm going to heat it over medium heat. I'm going to add in half a cup of unsalted butter. And once the butter starts to melt, I'm going to add in three quarter cups of semi-sweet chocolate chips. 
along with one third cup of caster sugar. It's also known as just super fine baker's sugar. You can also use regular sugar, but it just won't dissolve as nicely as the super fine sugar does. And we'll need a third cup of cocoa powder and one teaspoon of cinnamon. I'll mix this all together and let this cook over medium heat until that chocolate is completely melted and you have a nice smooth mixture. And the process of making this chocolate spread is super quick and easy. It takes almost no time to make. Make sure you're not overcooking and burning the chocolate. I've removed it from the heat and I'm going to transfer it into a little bowl and then set this into the refrigerator. I like to let it sit in the refrigerator so it cools down. It'll be a little bit easier to spread and work with. And I almost forgot my last ingredient. I like to add in a teaspoon of vanilla extract. You want to add this at the end, otherwise the heat will kind of kill the flavor. Stir that in. Oh, this smells so good. A little bit of that vanilla makes this super special. It's been one hour and my pumpkin yeast dough has proved so beautifully. It's doubled up in size. I'm going to just gently punch it down. I'm going to flour my work surface very lightly. Now this recipe makes for two loaves of bread. So I'm going to grab a little bench scraper and divide this dough in half. And we're going to be ready to roll it out, fill it, and shape it. I'm going to show you all of that. I'm also going to lightly flour my rolling pin. Now we're not going to knead this dough again. Just going to shape it into a rectangle. We're going to roll it out. And this rectangle is approximately 17 by 14 inches in size. And before I add on my chocolate filling, I'm going to grab a pastry brush and brush the edges with a beaten egg. And this chocolate spread has thickened nicely in the refrigerator. If it gets too thick, then just pop it into the microwave for about 10 seconds. I'm going to just roughly divide it in half and add half of it to this first layer of dough. And then I'll grab a spatula and spread this chocolate spread evenly, leaving a little bit of a, a rim around the edges because we'll need to seal up the dough. And I'm going to start on one end and then just start rolling the dough. And we're also going to pinch it on the edges. So as you roll it, kind of pinch it here on the sides and that egg wash is going to help keep the dough together. And then when you come to the end, you wanna take your fingers and kind of pinch the dough into a log, sealing the edges. I kind of like to roll it just to get it nicely sealed. Perfect. Next, I'm going to use a sharp serrated knife and we're going to split the log in half. I'm going to leave maybe about two inches of the dough sealed at the front. And then just gently start slicing through. And I find it's kind of helpful if you start to open the dough a little bit, just so your knife can get through to all the layers. Doesn't that look beautiful? I'm loving all that chocolate on the inside. And then to shape the bread, we're gonna just kind of twist it over each other. And today I'm going to be using two nine inch loaf pans. I'm lighting them with some parchment paper, a little bit of overhang so it's easier to take the loaf out. I'm gonna use a little bench scraper to help me lift this up and place it into the loaf pan. Kind of squeeze the bread together and drop it in. Super easy. How gorgeous does that look?
I wanted to show you guys how the loaves look like inside of the pans before they proof. Now they're gonna double up in size, they're gonna be really nice and fluffy before they go into the oven. My pumpkin chocolate bread is ready for its second proofing. These loaves need to proof for about an hour, hour and a half until they are doubled up in size. Now what I like to do to proof these faster is I place a big pot of steaming water into my oven to create like kind of like a proofing oven. And I place the loaves in there, make sure the oven is off. And um, the steam from the water is going to keep the bread really moist and it's also going to help it proof a little bit faster. And so once these are doubled up in size, I'm going to turn on my oven and preheat it to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And once my bread is done proofing and it's doubled up in size, I'm going to place it into my preheated oven set to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and the bread is going to bake for about 40 to 45 minutes or until the internal temperature reaches between 190 and 200 degrees Fahrenheit. I just use a regular digital thermometer, just stick it into the center of the bread and that way you'll know that the center is also done and the outside will be a nice a golden brown color. While this bread is baking, I'm going to show you how to make a really simple sugar syrup that we're going to glaze the bread with it just gives it this really special kind of glossy finish and this syrup is made with just two ingredients we'll need half a cup of water pour that into a small saucepan and add half a cup of white granulated sugar and I'll cook the syrup over medium heat for about three to four minutes until that sugar is completely dissolved and the syrup comes up to simmer and as soon as you take the bread out of the oven while it's still nice and hot you want to grab a pastry brush and brush the simple sugar syrup right over the bread. You can hear it sizzle just a little bit as it sinks in there. And you wanna be extra generous with the syrup. Really let it sink in there. If you want, you can even poke holes with like a toothpick into the bread so that it sinks into the inside as well. And you'll want to let the pumpkin chocolate babkas cool in the loaf pans for a good 30 to 40 minutes. And then you can use these parchment paper tabs to lift the bread out of loaf pans and onto a wire rack to cool completely. These smell so incredible. And just keep applying that simple sugar syrup until you've used all of it. And while my other babkas cool, I already have one that is cooled and ready to be enjoyed. You want to use a nice sharp serrated knife to cut through these. I'm going to show you guys that incredible chocolate swirl on the inside. This bread looks so pretty on the inside with that chocolate swirl and that pumpkin bread. It's just so soft and fluffy. I can't wait to dig in and enjoy this. And that's it for my easy pumpkin chocolate babka recipe. This bread turned out so incredible. And it fills your whole kitchen with the most mouth-watering aroma. For the full recipe, make sure to head on down in the video description box. I'm going to include a link there that'll take you over to my website where you could print this recipe off, find lots more tips, and you can find this recipe with metric measurements as well. So once this bread cools down, I'm gonna take it out of the pans, let it cool completely on our wire rack. I do recommend enjoying it within like the first 24 to 36 hours while the bread is extra fresh. It is at its peak at that time. I love to enjoy this with a cup of coffee. If you have some leftovers, just wrap it really well with plastic wrap and keep the bread at room temperature. And of course, if you can't finish one loaf, it makes an excellent gift for your neighbors, your friends, whoever you want to give it away to. I'm sure they're going to enjoy it as well. Let's dig in to enjoy. This bread looks so good. Even though it's not a brioche dough, the bread is still so incredibly soft and fluffy. And I love that I can get this done in one day instead of like a traditional two day process. Oh, and I'm loving these chocolate swirls in here as well. Mmm. Mmm. Mm-hmm. I am loving the flavors of this bread. It is so light and fluffy. I love that you get just a very light hint of the pumpkin coming through, a little bit of that warmth from the cinnamon, and the bread itself is not really sweet, which is great because that chocolate filling is very rich. You get this really good punch of chocolate flavor from that chocolate filling. It is so just creamy and smooth and just melts into your mouth. I really need a cup of coffee to go with this though. Mmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. This bread is amazing. If you are looking to impress your family and friends this holiday season, you've got to make some of this homemade babka bread. It is super, super easy to put together and it tastes incredible. Just serve this fresh with some coffee or tea and everybody is just going to love it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this recipe during this holiday season as much as I do and I'll see you next time with a new recipe.